This video was sponsored by Brilliant, a problem-solving website that teaches you to think like an engineer. Microsoft recently gave us our first glimpse at their new dual-screen devices, and their vision for this new form factor is quite beautiful in my opinion. Under all of that shiny new glass and that pretty new user interface though, the company has also hidden in plain sight its most ambitious plan to finally, once and for all, completely revamp how Windows works under the hood, and to turn it into a modern, fluid and secure operating system. So in the 63rd episode of the Story Behind series, let's explore not only what Microsoft is up to with dual screen devices, but also what their big plans are behind the scenes, and whether this big revamp will actually work, unlike all the previous attempts that they have in the past. Very little is known about Microsoft's dual screen hardware so far beyond how the devices look. The smaller Android-based Duo comes in at 5.6 inches per screen. The larger Windows 10 X-based Neo measures 9 inches across a single screen, and both look very premium. There are still many open questions here, like what the specs are, or how they managed to fit a decently sized battery into either of these when they both look so impossibly thin, or even whether the final units really won't have classic rear-facing cameras like the pre-production devices seem to imply. But all of that vagueness almost seems to be on purpose. The hardware is vague because what Microsoft really wants to focus on first is figuring out how this new software layer should work, and they're doing that right here in the open. On the Android side of things, the story is nothing too interesting as far as I can tell, as the Duo pretty much just runs regular Android with a few user interface changes that mostly come from Google. But on larger devices like the Neo, there's actually quite a lot going on. Microsoft is now shipping Windows 10X on them, and not only is this actually a major change from existing Windows versions, it is thankfully also available for us to try in the form of this new emulator. Windows 10X comes with a lot of top-level visual and interface changes, like much cleaner and more consistent design using a lot of Microsoft's fancy fluent design system, there's a simplified start menu without the live tiles and with new icons instead, a new action center that looks a little more modern, gesture-based navigation so you can swipe up to minimize apps for example, the app tray in the taskbar has been removed, and so on. The system itself just looks a little more modern, and apps are handled in a new way as well. Most of them only run full screen for now, and they can either run on one screen, side by side with another app, where they can interact with each other through stuff like drag and drop, or they can span across both things at once, either by sort of flowing through the hinge to emulate a single screen, or by arranging their content so part of it goes on one panel and the rest goes on the other, like this. Now what's extra cool here is that all of those fancy UI tricks can work not only on native apps, but also websites as Microsoft is building web standards and dual screen support for Edge and other Chromium based browsers to handle the two screens nicely as well. So those are some of the flashy new changes to the user interface, and while everybody is distracted by them, Microsoft is actually also pushing through major changes under the hood. Changes that, in my opinion, will be significantly more important going forward, because they might actually let the company turn Windows into a completely different kind of operating system. And to explain what I mean by that, let's actually think about operating systems as if they were along a spectrum. A spectrum of how managed they are. Like, on the one extreme you have, for example, classic Windows, which is mostly unmanaged. It lets users download and install apps from pretty much anywhere, and then lets those apps pretty much do whatever they want. They can run at startup, access any part of the OS, including the files of a user, the camera or the microphone of the device, without having to ask the user for permission. It lets them modify the registry, change system files, and so on. The system basically trusts the user to figure things out and create a safe and productive environment. On the other end of this spectrum, you have strictly managed systems like iOS, where apps can only come from one source, like the App Store for example, and they are containerized so they have to ask for permission every time they want to access the rest of the OS. And these managed systems then also actively optimize performance, for example by freezing or slowing down apps in the background to give users better performance on the app that's actually in front of them. While each approach obviously has benefits of its own, over time, regular consumers, especially those on mobile devices, where things like battery life and robust permission management for things like access to cameras, location and microphones is really important, well, those consumers have shown a pretty significant preference for the security, simplicity and performance that they get from the more managed operating systems like iOS and Android. 
So Microsoft has been trying to move towards that end of the spectrum for many years now, and Windows 10X is their latest attempt at just that. And interestingly, it actually wants to land somewhere in between the two extremes, trying to give users as many of the benefits of both approaches as possible. So Windows 10X natively runs so-called UWP apps. This is what Microsoft calls their modern managed app platform that was introduced with Windows 10. And these apps run much like mobile apps. They are containerized, so they can't touch the rest of your system or edit the registry or anything like that. They are easily frozen in the background to conserve resources. They have to ask the user for permission when they want to access things like the camera, for example. And installing, updating, and uninstalling is handled by the system, not by some third-party wizard that might or might not work. And while all of these modern apps can just run natively on the platform, Microsoft will also allow most classic Windows programs to run too, including ones being downloaded from pretty much anywhere on the web. But those will be thrown into a fancy new container that Microsoft has developed, which is essentially a stripped down version of regular Windows running on top of Windows 10X, which means these classic apps that Microsoft can't really manage will be isolated from the rest of the system. They won't be able to access sensitive stuff, slow things down, leave junk behind, and so on. That's a much better approach, at least in my opinion, than simply restricting users to the UWP platform, as most apps, including embarrassingly enough also Microsoft's own web browser and Office platform, really haven't adopted this new platform yet. And when Microsoft tried a restrictive approach in the past with Windows 10S as well as Windows RT, they failed pretty miserably. Now, interestingly, even with this hybrid approach, Microsoft claims that there will still be huge benefits. Without apps having full access to your system and messing it up over time, it shouldn't slow down, there shouldn't be a need for antivirus software, and Windows updates should be much faster too, apparently under 90 seconds per update. And given that Microsoft actually plans to prioritize foreground apps and freeze the ones in the background, we might actually end up with significantly improved performance as well. Now, if you're like me and you hear all of those amazing benefits, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, I want all of those benefits on my laptop as well. Why are they restricted to these dual screen devices? And the answer is that sadly, everything is more complicated than it seems on the surface. See, so far I've only really talked about the positives, but of course, as with every hybrid solution, there are bound to be a lot of rough edges. Apps that rely deeply on integrations into the OS, like games that use custom drivers to prevent cheating, or apps that live primarily in your app tray, for example, won't work fully on 10X. Microsoft claims that the performance and the compatibility in the container will be great, but I mean, who knows if they really will be, and many changes like forcing apps into full screen or freezing apps in the background might actually disrupt existing workflows on regular PCs. So launching it to that form factor right away might have resulted in yet another Windows RT or Windows 10S story, where users take a look at yet another Windows reboot, find that some of their programs don't work right out of the gate, and simply write it off as a whole. So instead, Microsoft tries to limit this new system to a new form factor first that is so different that people will hopefully give it a chance and explore it with fresh new eyes. And if that works, they can then slowly bring it to PCs as an optional alternative to classic Windows. There are no plans that I know of to fully replace Windows on desktops with 10X anytime soon, but the option for Windows 10X will most likely come eventually. In other words, this dual screen form factor actually gives Microsoft a sort of isolated testing ground where they can play around with new ideas, test things out, and actually polish things up before they ship them to more mainstream form factors. And while I think this plan is actually really interesting, I can also see a lot of things that could go wrong with it. I mean, it could be that the hybrid approach just by default is actually the wrong one, as it might lead to an operating system that would still be too cumbersome and too complex for mobile users, while also at the same time being too restrictive to desktop users. It might also be that dual screen devices never really take off and bury the whole project with them. Or it might be that people have been burned by Windows reboots often enough to where they just want to stick with Android and iOS going forward. There are a lot of ifs here and Microsoft clearly has a huge uphill battle to fight. But I also think that Windows 10X is their most nuanced and interesting approach to winning this decade-long struggle yet. Operating systems are absolutely fascinating in my opinion, and as we've just discussed, a few key architectural decisions can completely change how they work. 
If you'd like to learn more about them, I recommend checking out the computer science courses over at Brilliant that explain many of the exact topics that we've discussed right in this video. Topics like prioritizing system resources, parallelism, and more. You can start with computer science fundamentals if you are a beginner like me, or you can pick a more advanced course. I'm currently going through their lessons on search because we're trying to build a better search system for my app, Crowd, and it has been great in helping me understand what our developers are actually working on. They also have courses on machine learning, quantum computing, and more, and all the ones I've tried so far have been super well written and actually make you do quizzes after each new concept to properly drill them into your brain. They have daily challenges if you just want something quick while you are on the go, and you can sign up for free at brilliant.org slash techaltar. Links are in the description, and the first 200 people to sign up with that link will actually get 20% off their premium membership. Happy learning, and I'll see you in the next video.